Good afternoon. I'm going to give you a tour of the gardens on my property. And before that, I want to discuss some important things to consider when you're laying out your gardens. You need to consider the light, the soil, moisture, location, maintenance, and interest during the four seasons. And of course, budget. Light is important. You want to purchase plants for the proper sites. You have shaded areas of varying degrees. You have sunny areas of varying degrees. And it's important to consider that one of that, those aspects when you're purchasing your trees, your shrubs, your perennials, and your annuals. Soil is also a key factor. Is it well drained? Does water lay, there, lay in that area in the springtime? Is it rich soil? Is it poor soil, rocky soil, etc.? Do a, a good analysis of the soil you have and of course amend as necessary. Moisture is important. Are you going to be able to water the area? Are you relying on rain? If you're lying, relying on rain, be sure that you don't have any trees that will act as an umbrella and keep the rain from reaching your gardens. Location is important. As far as can, do you want to see these gardens from inside your home? Do you want to see these gardens from the street, from one corner of the property? You want to be able to have gardens that have interesting views from many perspectives. Maintenance. Maintenance is also important. Are you going to have the time to commit to pruning, deadheading, weeding, mulching, watering, and even the initial planning, preparing the soil, and maintaining them for the future? Interest. Interest is a, is a very big consideration. If you live in western New York, we have... Four seasons, well, <laughs> jokingly, you know, winter and construction, but we do have spring through winter, and it, you want to have interest in your gardens throughout those four seasons. So when you're purchasing plants and you're also choosing sites, it's important to consider that having color, whether it's from flowers or from foliage, throughout those four seasons. So color can be achieved through the flowers of course and also the leaves, um, perennials, trees, shrubs, foliage. You, there are greens, shades of green, there are variegated green and white, green and yellow, cream and white, cream and green, also, there's bronzes, there's plum-colored leaves. So you can do a lot with the color of the leaves and the flowers for contrast and interest. You can also use textures for interest in the garden, the texture of the leaves, the stems on the flowers, the flowers themselves. Oh, here comes the train. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you can also use sh the shape of the leaves, the shape of the perennial, the tree or the shrub as interest. And it's very important when you're planning how many trees or shrubs, perennials to use, or even annuals in your garden, the size of the garden. If it's a large garden, you would wanna group your plant varieties instead of spreading them out singly. For the, the appeal, you want to either use single 
shrubs or trees, ornamental trees. Perennials or annuals, you would want to use groups threes, fives, or sevens, etc., depending on how big the garden is. With the, the, keeping those topics in mind, you will create gardens that you will enjoy and get a lot of satisfaction in. And not just for yourself, but for your neighbors and your community. So I'm going to do a video of each of my gardens, talk about them a, a little bit. And hopefully you'll get to know a little bit more about gardening and um, experiment on your own and develop an appreciation for it. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to present approximately 12 videos of the gardens on my property, starting with the garden that lines the one side of the driveway. This garden has a farm motif. It's filled with grasses, flowering shrubs, evergreen shrubs, perennials that flower from spring all the way through fall, milk can, hens and chicks, there's, a, there's ground cover here as well. statuary and now we're going to move on to the gardens surrounding the little barn taking into account the light here there is part sun to full sun, this little area. Again, perennials that flower from spring to fall. This section, and then the section underneath the canopy is shade perennials. We can hear the babbling brook behind you. I'm going to take you around the other side of the barn. This is another little part sun garden, sort of perennials. Some hostas on this side. Few different varieties and there are also the hostas on the back side you can hear the brook again and that takes care of that section this video is the hosta garden on the property there's oh 20 25 different varieties here. Variegated shades of greens. There's yellow margins, yellow centers. There's miniatures. Different varieties. Twisted leaves, long leaves, spade shaped leaves. Greenish gray. Hostas tolerate dry conditions, drought conditions, because of their specialized root systems. And, uh, so to plant them underneath the canopy is very beneficial. 
These are sun patients annuals. And I have some statuary in this area and um, a few rocks that we've collected over the years. This garden run runs along the one bank that butts up against the brook. You can hear it in the background. And this, gar this garden, which is very long, is made up of ground cover, perennials, uh, flowering shrubs, Annabelle hydrangea here. I have hanging baskets mixed throughout, non-stop begonias. There are evergreen trees. Deciduous trees, maples, sycamore, black walnuts, lilacs. So a portion of this garden is shaded almost all day. And then another portion of it, which we're getting to soon, receives parts on in the afternoon. There are hostas here also. Ground cover, Virginia bluebells, um, they're, they're early. You won't be able to see those any longer. The boars, you can see the creek in the background. Little bench sitting area, big annual pots of impatience. So this is the beginning of the part sun garden. Hostas, Annabelle hydrangeas, black eyed Susans, garden flax, hostas, bee balm. Lobelia, white garden flax. This is a raised bed. You can see the creek in the background. There's a few ornamental trees here. Shrubs. Hostas. Now we're getting, we're reaching again in the shaded area, dappled shade, and also the area that um, the shell and protrusion is across the creek. So in this area, that I've got hostas, ground cover. There's heliobores, ferns. Lungworts, you can see the shale now in the, behind us, in front of us actually, I'm sorry. Trees, deciduous trees, waiting hearts, ground cover. It is still bees has done finished flowering, so it has the bleeding hearts unfortunately. Um, Japanese fern here, the silvery bronze leaves. There's my favorite black walnut tree. Absolutely beautiful. And again, here's a nice view of the shale, Marsalis shale. Continuing down this garden. The 
few coral bells. False bleeding, yellow bleeding heart. Uh, wild yellow violets. They're all done flowering. And all the um, empty spaces where the Virginia bluebells were. Beautiful in the springtime. It's, it's all a blanket of blue. See the creek in the background. And um, that's the end of that garden. Moving on, it's my extra large storage shed. Um, there, so there's two areas. To the right is a shaded, full shade area. To the left is full sun, and the rear of it is part sun, afternoon sun. So I have planted perennials that will tolerate those conditions, and also um, it's very dry on the shaded side. So I've incorporated hostas there. And we'll start down the shaded side. Hostas, false yellow bleeding heart. There's a pink bleeding heart. All done flowering. Hosta that's almost done flowering. There's a still bee. Longworts. These are beautiful in the spring. This is a strawberry colored flower. Goat's beard. As you can see, it's done flowering. Then along the shed itself, I just have hostas, different varieties. There are also Lily of the Valley, a variety. It's a pink that does not travel very far. It's not as invasive as the white. Now this is the back. And um, there were daylilies here. They're finished. Black-eyed Susans, bee balm, red, almost done. Daylilies, there's sedum. So again, you know, plants that flower from spring to fall. This is the sun side. Full sun for most of the day. Very hot, hot area. So I have daily lilies here. I have ground cover. Uh, irises. Again, trying to have color from spring to fall. This is Dublin Elaine, a double flowering day lily. Peach, yellow eye. Very pretty, and I also believe it's fragrant. Butterfly. Weed. There's a bit of euonymus in here just for some color. Silver Queen. It's really pretty for bouquets and arrangements. More day lilies. It's another beauty right here. Irises, they're all done. There's campanula here, but it's it's done flowering as well. So then the, on this side, then we get again to a shaded area because there's canopy from the oak tree. Longworts, there's um, perennial. This is perennial, perennial geranium, it's crane's bill. If I could find the pot, I could show you why they call it crane's bill. With the lack of rain and this drought situation, things are starting to have issues. Ah, here we go. It's dried out, but as you can see, if it was green, it would look like a crane's bill. And a few more hostas. There's a stoby here. These are also nice for arrangements when they're dry. Or in, in bouquets. This was a uh, pink, I believe. Hasta, pink bleeding heart, and hasta. 
that's the end of that garden. <laughs> we'll move on. This is the gar small garden on the far back corner of the property. Uh, McFarlane lilac in the front. And then I just have an assortment of hostas here. For convenience, it's far from the main gardens. Doesn't require any work. There's a, f oh, a few daylilies in there. Different varieties, just to give it some interest. Also, there's a row of them in the back side, and the creek is behind this fence. And there's some really nice wild perennials. And the monarch butterflies just love that pink, mauve colored flower. Now we're coming up, um, I call this the cigar garden, <laughs> shaped like a cigar. Got an ornamental um, beech tree here. And again, I've planted um, perennials to flower from spring to fall, and there's a few ornamental trees. Lobelia here, it's all done flowering, but the stems are very pretty in bouquets. It's gay feather, liatris, love the purple shades. Garden flax, nice eye. Bright colored, a daylily, double flowering, very striking. Butterfly bush, which didn't really do much this year. I didn't think it, I think it just didn't care for the weather we had. Too cold, too wet, and now and then it was too hot and dry. My poker, red hot poker, is all done. Another of those pretty day lilies, double flowering. Uh, this is viburnum, snowball. Beautiful white flowers in the spring. Then there is a large group here of echinacea. There's white swan, there's a deep purple and the light pink. Daylilies mixed in. Black eyed Susan. They love the hot, dry area here. A few more daylilies mixed in. Unfortunately, they're all pretty much all done flowering. Now, daylilies do, you can. Plant daylilies, it'll flower early season, mid and late. So I still have a few daylilies on the property that are flowering. Again, the garden flax. And a few sunflower volunteers. This is the, going around this, the back side of this garden. This is one of the candy series. Echinacea again. Like I Susan's. My snowball. Daylilies. Gay feathers. Daylilies. I have some thyme here. Lobelia. Garden flax. And a few grasses tucked in. And that's the video of the cigar garden. This is a shrub garden made up of Rosa Sharon varieties, lilac varieties, and hydrangea varieties. They start flowering in the spring and then all the way through fall. I have dwarf varieties here, variegated varieties double flowering lilacs, dwarfs. I'll just focus on a few varieties here. This is Rosa Sharon, beautiful tissue paper flowers and the leaves are variegated. I have this beautiful creamy margin if you can see those. 
There are mature lilacs here planted in the 50s. I will be pruning them in the fall for various reasons, um, for management and also for health reasons for the shrubs that get too tall and heavy uh, and they will keel over. There's a Sharon, so there's two different colored flowers on this shrub. There's a maroon eye with the pink petals, and then there's a white with a maroon eye. It's a little different, didn't expect that. I have a few young lilacs, a dark, deep purple. I have Hiawatha, which is, um, I would say it has white margined flowers and a medium purple flower. Here is one of the hydrangeas. This is strawberries and cream. It's a paniculata grandiflora. Enormous flowers. This is just one of the smaller ones. Next to my hand you can see how big they are. These are beautiful. They, as the nights get cooler, the flowers start to turn pink at the base and then the white cream on top. They make beautiful dried flowers, beautiful arrangements, and um, they're wonderful for Western New York because they don't have the issues of having their buds frozen in the early spring with the cold snaps and the snow that we may get in, you know, late April, early May. A few more rows of Sharon. Another mature, enormous lilac, which is going to get a pruning. And another rose of Sharon. We're going to tour the front garden. It's a raised bed, faces uh, the, the road and it lies between the road and the house. It is made up of flowering shrubs, deciduous shrubs, evergreen shrubs, perennials, ground cover, and of course there is color from spring all the way actually through winter. I, it is a very large bed, so it's uh, 90 feet by 18 feet, and because of that, during the planting stages, I grouped the same varieties of plants, five, seven, or more at a time, to impact the interest. Therefore, there's a lot of color in the different areas during the seasons. Okay, we're going to start on the, the shorter end. At the end here, we have... A PG hydrangea paniculata grandiflora. This is limelight. This is a hydrangea that you do not need to be concerned about losing its buds in the spring when we have the strange weather here in Western New York. This is a smaller flower. You can see how big they are. These flower on new growth. And along the bottom edge of this entire raised bed, there are daylilies in the sun, sunnier section. There's hostas, false yellow bleeding hearts. There is Jack Frost. There's Jack Frost. Lily of the Valley. Also, there's Crane's Bill here, and this goes all the way around the shaded side. So within the garden, I have anemone, this is perennial anemone. It also comes in white and another shade of pink. It's very nice perennial. It's very wispy. There is evergreen here. There's a group of hydrangeas here. This is the Endless Summer series. So these flower on old and new wood. 
nine bark in the background shrub deciduous shrub again for interest and contrast there's hosta here with a creamy white margin a large group of ladies mantle here and again the false yellow bleeding hearts in the background this is another this is the Sorensis hydrangea this is twist and shout flowers on a new growth and next to it is spirea a princess I believe moving along we have hosta here in the background, there's a large group of the strawberry flowering longwort, early spring flowering. Holly, which I do wrap for the winter because uh, between the lack of moisture and the winters without snow to shelter it. I wrap it and um, it's doing very well. Another hydrangea here. And there's a large group of ladies mantle. These are the flowers that are they're finished but they were beautiful chartreuse green. So grass in the back. Round. So of course there's, there's layers. There's shorter plants, mid-height plants and taller plants. To get again for interest there's euonymus bushes here. Hookara, a large group of purple palace hookara bleeding. Um, I apologize, coral bells. I've had to dust them because I have a Japanese beetle issue. They seem to like the taste of hookara this year. Then here is a large group of a stilby. This is a pink flowering a stilby. You can see here there's one little bloom left. Um, but the spent blooms, they're very pretty. They're really nice for um, bouquets and dried arrangements. So there's a large group of these here. Hosta. And this is, you can see, this is the PG Hydrangea, Panicula Grenifleur. Again, this flowers on new wood. No dangers of losing the buds in our crazy spring weather here in western New York. It's a nice shot of Jack Frost here for shade along the bottom edge of the raised bed. This corner there there's a large group of a stilby euonymus. There's a few cra few crab apple trees in this garden. Um, coming along the other side a few young hydrangeas A nice blue spruce dwarf shrub evergreen daylily in the background sea oats yes this is a fall flowering aster fringe leaf bleeding heart and as you can see my primrose are starting to flower again and that is because after they're done flowering in the spring I deadhead them. So I get two flushes of color. Corbel, garden flax. This is an example of the hydrangea varieties you do not want to plant in this part of the state. It's the macrophylla, mop head as they're called. They will not flower here because they create their buds for the following year in the prior season and then come spring the buds get burnt frozen off by our frost hard frost continuing down this side there's a group of stilby potentilla tangerine very pretty unfortunately again the japanese beetles are wreaking havoc on it it's a group of daylilies here, and the daylily, I have deadheaded it, so it's starting to send out new blossoms. 
another fall aster, the back of that lovely holly. Wigala, this is wine and roses, I believe. Again, a nice shrub for contrast. This is the twist and shout hydrangea. And they start off a creamy white, and as the nights get cooler, as you can see the blossoms start turning this lovely pinky mauve. They're lovely for drying and for bouquets. Euonymus, contrast again, nine bark, and I have this adorable little Alberta spruce here called Albie. <laughs> He's doing very well because he does get the afternoon sun, dwarf. This is a different variety of aster flower in the fall. And this is, we're back now to the limelight. As you can see, the limelight has just a little hint of green to the blossoms. And that's the end of that garden. Tour of what I call the kitchen garden. So you can see this garden from the kitchen deck and also from the road. It is a full sun garden. In this garden I have as I have done with all my other gardens, I have evergreen shrubs, deciduous shrubs, um, evergreen trees, there's ornamental tree, there's perennials that flower from early spring all the way through fall, and then I have winter interest. It's a slightly raised bed. We'll start on this end with um, sedum. Red, the red bee balm in the back. A daylily here that's going to start flowering again because I did deadhead them. A little rose here, dwarf, dwarf rose. Very nice evergreen shrub here. Spirea, little, this is a princess, I believe. Euonymus. This is the, the cherry. Like I'd Susan's for interest. This is a nice interest shrub. The blue spruce in the background. And then of course there's some ground cover. There's Flax and um, carnation. Here's that drift rose in bloom. Groups of daylilies, which are now all done flowering. This is the Van Oot Spirea, a wedding veil, spring flowering. I'll come along the side here. This is a geranium ground cover. Just continuously flowers. Hosta, which isn't doing very too great. I mean, you know, we got slug snails issue because we did have a lot of rain at one point. This is a dwarf Japanese lilac. I was, pardon me, Korean lilac. Beautiful flowers in uh, mid, mid spring. Garden flax, and my volunteer pumpkin plant. <laughs> I had Cinderella pumpkins in this garden in the fall last year, and some of the seeds overwintered, and here we go. He's taking over my sidewalk. Uh, another anemone in the background there. Fall aster. Lobelia. And that's the tour of the kitchen garden. This is one of two gardens in the lawn that are triangular shaped. Each one has an ornamental tree. This is a weeping beech, uh, an ornamental flowering, sh several fl flowering shrubs, and uh, perennials. There's interest again 
from fall to spring. There's ground cover, evergreens. It's my Victorian urn. 18, circa 1820 some, I believe. Um, Coreopsis, this is Moonbeam. And this is the Bluebird Rosa Sharon. Unfortunately, again, the beetles are honing in on this. I've dusted it and hopefully that will deter them from devouring the rest of the blossoms. Um, in the center of each of these triangular gardens, there is a tree peony. They flower very early in the spring. And this is what's left of the blooms. They're beautiful, enormous, plate-sized tissue paper petals. We'll go over and look at the um, other triangular garden now. This is the second of the two triangular gardens. As you can see, I have sunflower volunteers that have pretty much taken over, but the birds love the seed in the fall, so I leave them. So on this corner, there is a oak leaf hydrangea. The oak leaves here. Unfortunately, the Japanese beetles ate the blossoms and next year I'm going to take preventative measures because it is a beautiful shrub. It will tolerate part sun and that's why it's in this bed here. I also have a butterfly bush in this garden. Here it is. And as you can see the Japanese beetles are starting to feed on it as well. On the back side uh, there are Asiatic, lily, Asiatic lilies in here, Oriental lilies, fragrant. There's the tree peony in the center. And this is the fringe tree, ornamental tree. And it literally has blooms in the spring that are white that look like fringe. Very nice tree. And that's it for the other triangle garden. Uh, the foundation plantings, the gardens around the outside of the house. These are a mix of ornamental flowering trees, shrubs, deciduous shrubs, evergreen trees, and uh, perennials. Interest again all through the season. So this end here I have a weeping double cherry tree. At the base there are Blue star shrubs, and that's a weeping cedar, Henry's garnet, potentilla, which again the Japanese beetles are just loving. This is a Russian spruce, spirea, the front entrance of the house. That's annual planters there. The other side of the stairs, of course, there's a spirea. Daylilies, another potentilla. And this is a Korean fir. Very pretty. It looks like it's been snowed on, if you can see the white needles. Then around the, the deck off the kitchen, there's a raised bed. A still be a clematis in the background. This is I had to take this down and replant everything. So the plants here, a little bit of a shock, but they're doing very well. Dwarf dwarf fur. This is a little row of a still be. This is very pretty. Soft pink and the leaves when they come out in the spring are bronze. And this is the deck of course. I've got different potted plants, annuals up here. The other side of the deck. This is Annabelle. This is a Sorensis hydrangea. You can plant these in shade, sun. They are very easy to maintain. They grow on they flower on new wood. There's hostas here. 
uh, mostly lily of the valley and uh, chameleon plant. Ground cover, which is taken over, which is fine because it can't go anywhere. It is uh, fairly invasive, but between the sidewalk and the driveway, it's not going to escape. <laughs> and that's that garden.